Welcome to Spaced Out Radio's True Tales. My name is Dave Scott, and we are talking with our listeners about their experiences with the unknown. Here in Episode 2, we are going to talk with Steve from North Carolina, who's taking us back to the spring of 1987, when he and his buddies John and Trent went on an adventure in the mountains, only to race on out because of what they saw. Remember to leave a comment below on your thoughts of this True Tales. Also, do us a favor and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you know when we are going live. Here is Steve's True Tale. My buddy Trent, that lived here, you know, with me and Carrie, had another buddy named John that lived up near Appalachia. And, you know, we went up there to hang out with him, and uh, then he, we decided we were going to go to Grandfather Mountain, which was this kind of sightseeing thing up there. And the whole time, you know, we're, we're kind of looking for girls or you know girls with their parents or whatever <laughs> but so we got up there and then we thought you know this was on like a friday so i think on the saturday morning we thought hey we saw this little what looked like a creek and we thought we hey there might be some trout there because uh in Kerry where we live in near raleigh there's no trout you know it's just bass but we do have trout up in the mountains well you know, we thought we'd fish a little and mess around, just being, you know, almost non-teenage boys. Finally decided on that Saturday morning, once we were up there on a Friday afternoon, you know, hey, we can sneak down this little trail in my Jeep and get locked in for the night and just mess around and try to maybe fish and drink some beers or whatever and just you know just try to get away with something so that's how it started we went back the next day saturday with the plan after we kind of saw the the scope of the land and then we got back you know went back saturday for the plan of staying the night so and that was the whole plan to stay there tonight and just hang out drink some beer and you know we were going to fish maybe, but then we realized there wasn't a creek, so we couldn't do that. So we were really just kind of hanging out, talking, and messing around. We didn't know if the game patrolled the road after they closed the gates, or if they were wardens in the park all night, or, you know, we had no idea. So we didn't plan that good for what we did. So we knew they locked the gates at like 8.30 or 9. So after that, you know, we were trying to, once we got down there, we, we, we were considered ourselves lucky just to get to where we were. And then, you know, we were very quiet and, you know, didn't have the music turned up loud or anything. And we were just, and we only had like a couple, six packs a piece. So it's not like we were going down there to get, you know, wasted or anything. But we were trying to be quiet in case there was somebody, you know, that could hear us or... You know, just trying to keep it on the down low just in case the rangers still patrolled the roads outside after they closed the gates. It didn't get dark, you know, till between 8 and 9. And, you know, we were really on alert then because we knew, you know, we smoked then. So we, you know, we were worried about people seeing our cigarettes and we were worried about people hearing us talking, you know, because we weren't that far off that little road. Once we realized the creek didn't go but so far, which, you know, like I said, it was really wasn't a creek. So we were really trying to be quiet. And then, you know, we kind of started getting used to it, and we thought that everything was okay. And it started to get a little later. And then I imagine, and like I said, we didn't have cell phones or clocks or anything. And we didn't wear watches, but I just kind of figured around 11 o'clock, is what started what we thought was the game warden coming to bust us. I just wouldn't have ever thought it was anything else. You know, I mean, I just, we saw a light and thought it was in the forest and we thought someone had heard us, you know, or saw us, you know, or maybe our cigarette lights, you know, and somebody was coming through the woods from maybe a park office or something and we're going to, you know, take us to jail or give us a fine or something for being out there after the park was supposed to be closed. 
where we were, you know, the the land rose up on both sides of us. We were in like a little gully. So when we saw the light, we thought it was coming through the forest. As the light got closer and closer, you know, once it got about probably 20 yards away, we realized this light was above the trees. Now, and these weren't tall trees. These, This is what we call jack pines, about probably five-year-old pines. So these were probably 15 to 20 foot pines. So they weren't, you know, tremendously tall. And that's why I guess we didn't realize the light was, you know, in the sky until it got 10 to 20 yards from us. And that's when we realized this light wasn't in the woods. It was above the tree line. And right before the light got unto us, which is about a 20 foot wide area in this creek, that light turned out. And then we started to see the silhouette coming over us. But once we saw that light cut out, we didn't know what to think. You know, when once we saw it wasn't somebody coming through the woods, you know, we didn't realize at this point everything just got confused and I don't even know if we said anything to each other you know we were just kind of at that point just scared you know we didn't know what was coming at us and until we saw you know what was coming over the horizon in front of us well what we saw when the light cut out slowly and it, it didn't move really fast at all we saw a football shaped object and and that's just the silhouette you know where it blackened out the sky it looked like a football and we thought it to be probably 75 to 100 foot above the ground and totally dark on all sides and it really resembled a football and it came over us and completely stopped right above us and our jeep in the creek i can't even remember what we were saying i know we were trying to figure out what the heck this thing was but there was no sound it we knew it wasn't you know a helicopter or anything or because you couldn't hear anything coming from this object and as soon as we saw it coming over the tree line we had already tried to jump in the jeep and you know before it even had come to a stop over us i had we had all bailed in the jeep and the cj5 doesn't have much of a back seat so i had like a rumble seat back there that, that my john jumped in and sat in the back and i tried to turn the key and there was nothing because we were freaking out i was going to get out of there at that point i didn't care if we went to jail or the game wardens found us I didn't know what the thing was. I didn't know. It may have been the game warden from some kind of vehicle, but I didn't know that. So I was trying to start the Jeep and get out of there, or at least turn around while it was moving over us. And we turned the key. There was nothing. There was no power at all. There was, you know, the key didn't even make a noise when it tried to turn over. It was like all electricity was gone out of this thing. And once we stopped that and kind of looked up, I think Trent looked up out there and he said, it's right over us and it's not moving. And I'm like, and I, we, I kind of opened my door and looked up too, and it was just sitting there. No noise, nothing. It was just sitting on top of us at that point. It was only stopped probably two or three minutes. I tried... You know, that's when I tried to start again and again. And that's when I opened the door and looked up. And then we all kind of opened the look doors. They opened their doors and looked up too because there was nothing else we could do. And it probably a minute went by after that. So I'm figuring in total two minutes to stop over. And then it just took off. I mean, straight up, well, not really straight up, kind of at an angle, you know, maybe at 10 o'clock it went up, but incredibly, incredibly fast. And 
right before it went up, we heard like a humming, pulsating sound that only, it, it took five or ten seconds for this sound, you know, to kind of, it just went from a low rumble to a higher, you know, vibrating pitch, I guess. And then, whoa, she was gone. And it, it, it shot up really, really, really quick. Like, nothing I've ever seen before in my life. It probably, you know, we probably lost sight of it before it actually disappeared. But you couldn't see because it was dark. And once again, I can't remember if it was stars out or if it was cloudy. But, you know, all I know is, you know, it wasn't but a few seconds and we could not see it anymore. You know, if you blinked once, maybe you could see it. But if you blinked twice, it was gone. It's almost like it was looking into the woods, but... And I guess somehow it knew we were there in this clearing and then it cut the light out before it got over the top of us. And, you know, so the closest light got us was probably 20, 25 yards and it blinked out. It never, the light never came down straight at us. But when it got over us, I know it made a complete stop. And there would have been no other reason for that thing to stop unless it knew we were under it. And that, and that I, I mean, I don't see any other reason. I mean, unless it was because of the 20-foot gap in the woods, but I'm not buying that. That thing stopped right over our vehicle. I, you know, I'm not sure why it stopped over us, and I don't know if it sense something I have no idea but I do believe we're the reason it shot up in the sky and didn't continue on you know I don't I'm not really scared of much of anything but just the fact that I did not know what this thing was you know I would almost rather I would have much rather it have been a game at least I would have known you know uh, what was it, you know, and I don't know the trouble I'd been in, and because I worried a long time, just, you know, did this thing remember who I was? I mean, I didn't, I didn't have any idea about you, like I said. And I read more and more stories, and, you know, I started worrying, maybe they remember who I am, I don't know, but I guess that night, it, it didn't, it scared me more later, as I learned more and more and more about, you know, situations like this I guess I would say but just the unknown is what scared us all and during the time we were you know observing this thing we were all really petrified and we were all tough guys we were football players you know we we weren't scared of much of anything and but that was probably the most scared I have been in my life I know it was a UFO now whether it was alien I have no idea but I don't believe it was something that this planet has made. It took off too fast. We want to say thank you to Steve for allowing us to broadcast his true tale. Thank you for listening, and be sure to share this story as well. If you'd like your true tale told on Spaced Out Radio, do me a favor and email me at dave at spacedoutradio.com, and let's line it up. Remember to hit that subscribe button here on YouTube, along with following us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. Our website, where you can get our swag and all sorts of information, is spacedoutradio.com. Until next time, when another true tale comes your way, always remember, together, my friends, we own the night. <laughs>